Although drain devices remove accumulated contaminants from the reservoirs, the air system remains 100% saturated with water vapor, which will condense when the temperature falls. To solve this problem, a desiccant air dryer, like this Bendix AD9, is installed to remove 100% of the liquid and solid contaminants and approximately 95% of the water vapor prior to entering the brake system. Before we take a closer look at the air dryer's role, let's examine its main components. The air dryer includes the supply port, end cover, end cover sump, oil separator, desiccant cartridge, desiccant drying bed, check valves, outer shell, delivery port, control port, purge valve piston, purge valve, turbo cutoff valve, and exhaust port. The air dryer is installed in the discharge line between the compressor and the supply reservoir and also interacts with the governor. Air and contaminants from the compressor enter the air dryer supply port in the end cover. Air traveling through the end cover cools, causing some contaminants to condense and drop to the sump of the end cover. Upon exiting the end cover, air enters the oil separator, where the remaining solid and liquid contaminants are removed. Still saturated with 100% water vapor, air flows from the oil separator to the desiccant cartridge. Air flowing through the desiccant drying bed becomes progressively drier as the water vapor adheres to the desiccant material in a process known as adsorption. While some air will flow through the orifice adjacent to the check valve, the majority of the dry air exits the desiccant cartridge through its integral check valve to fill the purge volume between the desiccant cartridge and outer shell. Dry air in the purge volume flows toward the end cover and passes through the single check valve, out the delivery port, and to the supply reservoir. The air dryer will remain in the charge cycle until air brake system pressure reaches the governor cutout setting of 120 psi. The same signal of air from the governor which causes the compressor to unload also starts the air dryer purge cycle. Air from the governor enters the control port of the air dryer, moving the purge valve piston. The turbo cutoff seals the inlet port and opens the purge valve. Contaminants in the end cover sump are expelled from the open purge valve. To protect the supply reservoir against air loss, the check valve closes. At the same time, air in the purge volume and air passing through the desiccant cartridge reverse direction as the purge valve is opened. Air from the purge volume passes through the orifice adjacent to the check valve and expands to near zero psi, becoming super dry before flowing into the desiccant cartridge. This super dry air regenerates the desiccant material by stripping away accumulated water vapor. Contaminants in the oil separator are also carried away through the open purge valve. Closing the dryer inlet port during the purge cycle ensures that loss of engine turbocharger pressure is minimized in the event the compressor intake is connected to the turbo. The entire purge cycle is complete in about 25 seconds.
The purge valve will remain open until air brake system pressure is reduced to the governor cut-in setting of 100 PSI. When the governor exhausts air from the compressor unloaders, air is also removed from the air dryer purge piston. With control pressure removed, the piston moves in response to its spring and closes the purge valve. The charge cycle repeats. Since the air dryer is controlled by the governor, which in turn reacts to supply reservoir pressure, it is important that air leakage in the supply reservoir be minimized for proper air dryer operation. Leakage in the supply reservoir will result in the compressor cycling between loaded and unloaded, causing the air dryer to alternate between the charge and purge cycle. It must be remembered that air loss in the supply reservoir only will not be registered on the dash gauges because of the single check valves that protect the service reservoirs.